I, 28 female, am currently four months pregnant. My husband Newton and I have been trying to conceive for the past two years, and I'll be honest, there were moments when we almost lost hope. The wait felt endless. But then, almost when we least expected it, we found out I was pregnant. This pregnancy means the world to us, especially because we've had to overcome so many obstacles along the way. We are absolutely overjoyed that we're finally going to welcome our first child into the world. Since I have suffered miscarriages before, Newton and I decided that this time we wanted to be extra cautious for the sake of our emotional well-being. We had chosen to keep the pregnancy a secret until we were absolutely certain that everything was progressing smoothly. We wanted to protect ourselves from the added heartache of having to publicly grieve if for any reason we lost this pregnancy too. So as of last week, neither my parents nor my younger sister Ellie knew that I was pregnant. It felt strange at times keeping them in the dark but at the same time, I just needed the space to process everything. My family has always been the type to celebrate everything from big milestones to even the smallest of victories. And honestly, I love that about them. It makes every occasion feel extra special and we've built so many happy memories together over the years. However, for the past four months, I've been a bit distant when it comes to attending family events. I just needed more time for myself, especially with the pregnancy being such an emotional journey. Last week, though, my younger sister Ellie got promoted at work and she was beyond excited. Ellie was supposed to have her dream wedding last year, but everything fell apart at the last moment. It was the night before the wedding when her ex cheated on her with one of his co-workers during his bachelorette party. The next day, on the actual day of the wedding, the groom didn't even have the decency to show up and talk to Ellie. Instead, one of his friends came to deliver the devastating news that he had decided to back out of the wedding entirely. Our entire family was shocked and the whole situation was incredibly embarrassing. We had put so much into preparing for her big day and it was supposed to be one of the happiest moments of her life. Ellie was absolutely devastated, completely heartbroken. She had been so excited and full of hope for her future with this man, only to have it all shattered in such a cruel and public way. After that, Ellie threw herself into her career. It was her way of coping, her way of staying busy and distracted from the hurt. She's always been ambitious and hardworking, but after the wedding fiasco, her dedication to her job reached a new level. So now that she got promoted, it was a huge milestone for her, both personally and professionally. That's why she wanted to throw a celebration to mark the occasion and practically begged me to come. She mentioned that she hadn't seen me in a while, and I could tell she really missed having me around. My parents were also encouraging me to show up, asking me repeatedly to attend and telling me how much it would mean to Ellie. I really didn't want to disappoint her, especially since I hadn't been present at the last few family gatherings, so I finally agreed. But the thing is, I didn't want to steal the spotlight from Ellie on her big night by showing up visibly pregnant and having the focus shift away from her achievement. That was the last thing I wanted. I wanted her to have her moment. And I didn't want to take away any attention. But with the baby bump growing, it was getting harder and harder to hide. Still, I thought I could manage it for one night. I decided to wear a long, flowy dress that would help conceal my midsection, and I even went so far as to wear a shapewear to minimize the bump as much as possible. I was determined to keep the focus on Ellie and her promotion. When I showed up at Ellie's party, everything seemed to be going according to plan. No one suspected a thing, and I breathed a little easier knowing that my efforts to hide my pregnancy were working. My mom did make a comment, though, 
She noticed that my face and arms looked a bit chubbier than usual, but I had already thought about how to handle situations like that, so I quickly joked back, saying I'd just been eating a lot lately. Honestly, I was relieved that they were more inclined to think I was just gaining weight rather than suspecting the truth about my pregnancy. That felt like the safer option for now. As the night went on, I realized just how out of place I was feeling. I'm not used to staying up late anymore, and the party seemed to be going on forever. My husband, Newton, came straight from work to the party and was having a good time. He did keep checking in on me from time to time, making sure I was okay, which I appreciated. Meanwhile, Ellie and the rest of my family were having the time of their lives. They were doing shots, dancing in the backyard, just really enjoying themselves. It made me happy to see Ellie so carefree and in high spirits, especially after everything she's been through. But I started feeling queasy, probably from all the oily food and the heat of the evening. I decided I needed to get away from the loud music and the energetic dancing, so I slipped inside the house and found a quiet spot on the couch. All I really wanted at that point was to go back home, put my feet up, maybe give myself a leg massage, crawl into bed and read a bit on my Kindle. I closed my eyes for just a second, hoping to rest and gather myself. That's when my Aunt Mia sat down next to me and startled me awake. I hadn't even realized I'd dozed off. She offered me a glass of wine, but I shook my head without giving any explanation. She then commented on how my face was practically glowing all evening and then commented how I looked like I was pregnant. I froze, not knowing how to react. I tried to laugh it off, feeling awkward and avoiding eye contact, but Aunt Mia is no fool. Her eyes widened in realization and before I knew it, she asked me outright, are you really pregnant? I panicked inside, but tried to play it cool. I shook my head, hoping to distract her, but Aunt Mia placed her hands on my stomach and her eyes lit up. With absolute certainty, she exclaimed, Oh my God, sweetheart, you are pregnant. She laughed and pulled me into a hug. I panicked a bit and whispered, asking her, almost pleading not to say anything to anyone yet since I didn't think it was the right moment to announce. But Aunt Mia brushed off my concerns and she insisted that the family deserved to know such happy news and that everyone had been waiting so long for this moment, eagerly hoping for me to get pregnant. I pointed out to her that this was Ellie's night, but Aunt Mia cradled my face in her hands, smiled at me and reassured me that this was a family night. Since everyone had gathered together, it was the perfect time to share and asked me not to overthink it. Before I could stop her, Aunt Mia got up and walked outside where everyone was still dancing and celebrating. My heart dropped as I watched her. Aunt Mia, with all the enthusiasm in the world, gathered everyone's attention. She told them that she had some big news to share and then without missing a beat, she pointed directly at me and announced to everyone that I was pregnant. For a brief moment, there was silence as everyone took in what Aunt Mia had just said, and then the entire party erupted. My family rushed towards me, surrounding me in a wave of hugs, cheers, and congratulations. They were all so overjoyed, hugging me tightly with tears in their eyes, expressing how happy they were for me and Newton. They had all known about my previous miscarriages, so they were understandably very ecstatic about this news. My mom and dad were crying, overcome with emotion. People were hugging Newton too, congratulating him and celebrating this new chapter in our lives. This certainly wasn't how I wanted to announce my pregnancy. I had envisioned a more intimate personal moment, something quiet and special, where I could tell my family when I felt ready. Instead, I had been thrust into the spotlight at a party that was supposed to be all about Ellie. And that's when I noticed her, standing off to the side, trying 
her best to smile, but clearly feeling out of place. She wasn't joining in the celebration and was avoiding eye contact with me. I felt a wave of guilt wash over me, knowing that I had tried so hard to avoid exactly this kind of situation. I walked up to her and told her how sorry I was that Aunt Mia revealed my pregnancy. Ellie took a deep breath and asked why I hadn't mentioned anything about my pregnancy before. I explained that I had planned to announce it a few weeks later when I felt more comfortable and ready to share the news, but she shook her head, pursed her lips and simply said, whatever, I guess you got your wish. Her words stung and I was taken aback by her reaction. I tried to reason with her, but Ellie didn't seem to be in the mood for a discussion. She took a sip of her wine and walked away and didn't pay any more attention to me. The rest of the night was filled with overwhelming advice from my family and friends about being a first-time parent. Everyone seemed eager to share their tips and experiences. Ellie, meanwhile, kept glaring at me from across the room, as if all this was somehow my fault. Her reaction made me feel even more uncomfortable and guilty. At one point, I felt the urgent need to use the bathroom. I got up and headed towards the guest bathroom, but it was full. With my bladder feeling like it was about to burst, I decided to go upstairs to use the main bedroom's washroom instead. After I relieved myself, I emerged from the bathroom and found Ellie standing outside waiting for me. She seemed drunk. I smiled awkwardly, feeling the tension between us and tried to offer another apology. Ellie didn't seem to soften at all. Instead, she just rolled her eyes and asked, Are you really pregnant? Her tone was almost dismissive, and there was an edge of skepticism in her voice. I looked at her, holding my stomach instinctively, and responded, Of course I am. Why would I lie about it? Ellie continued to say how this was all really suspicious when I had not even revealed the pregnancy to my mom, who I usually talked with every day. Her persistent questioning was starting to really irritate me. I tried to explain my reasons once again, hoping she'd understand that it had been my choice to keep it a secret. Then Ellie, in a tone that cut deeply, said, Maybe this pregnancy will also end in miscarriage just like your previous ones. I was stunned by her insensitivity. How could she say something so vile about my child? I yelled at her, my voice trembling with a mix of hurt and anger. How dare you say something like that? I've apologized to you several times tonight, but what you said was out of line. My voice echoed with frustration. Ellie shot back, expressing her bitterness about me, stealing her spotlight, especially after everything she had been through last year. I tried to remind her that I had been there for her through her heartbreak, spending countless nights at her place, helping her heal after her groom abandoned her. I would never intentionally overshadow her. And if she was angry about how things turned out, she should direct her frustration at Aunt Mia who had outed me without my consent. Ellie, however, continued to blame me. Feeling utterly drained and fed up with the argument, I decided it was best to walk away and go back downstairs. I needed some space and time to process everything, hoping that Ellie would calm down and we could address things later. Ellie was following me close behind as she kept repeating how I was being selfish and how I should have just let her have one night to herself. I ignored her, but as I reached the stairway to go downstairs, I suddenly felt a forceful push from behind. My eyes widened in shock as I stumbled, struggling to regain my balance. I managed to grab the railing, trying to stop myself from falling, but the momentum and my own weight caused my knees to buckle. I lost my footing and ended up falling head first down the stairs. In a split second, my instincts took over. I used my hands to protect my stomach, trying to shield my baby from the impact. My body slammed down the stairs and the full weight of my fall pressed down on my wrists. The fall was brutal. I felt an intense crack and sharp, searing pain shoot through my hands. 
The pain was immediate and overwhelming, and I cried out in agony. As I lay there, crumpled on the stairs, the world around me seemed to blur. The pain in my wrists was excruciating, but my primary concern was for the baby, whether the fall had caused any harm. The commotion of my fall and my cries for help quickly drew the attention of the rest of the family. They rushed over in a panic, their faces filled with concern and alarm. The room was suddenly chaotic as everyone tried to make sense of what had just happened. My husband immediately picked me up and brought me down the stairs. I was in a lot of pain and kept repeating that Ellie had pushed me down the stairs. Everyone looked shocked. All eyes turned to Ellie, who was standing behind me looking guilty and silent. My husband screamed at her as he confronted her about how she could push a pregnant woman down the stairs. My mother, visibly distressed, rushed up the stairs and shook Ellie's shoulders, demanding to know if she had really pushed me. Ellie, her face flushed and tearful, whimpered and nodded in confirmation. The realization hit my mother hard. Ellie then began to cry uncontrollably, holding my mother, saying she was drunk and didn't know what she was doing. I was starting to lose consciousness, the pain and shock overwhelming me. Through the haze, I heard Newton urgently calling 911, requesting an ambulance. My vision was blurring and I could barely make out the concerned faces around me. Everything after that was a blur of sirens, confusion and frantic activity. When I finally came to, I found myself in a hospital room. Newton was asleep in a chair beside my bed, looking exhausted. I woke him gently, asking for some water as my throat was dry and parched. As he helped me sip the water, I asked him what had happened after the fall. He recounted how I had lost consciousness due to the pain and how the fracture in my wrist had required immediate medical attention. The doctors had placed me in a cast and I would need to wear it for the next four to six weeks while the bone healed. My next question was about the baby. Newton reassured me that the doctors had checked and our child was safe, which brought a wave of relief. I was glad to know that our child was going to be okay. Newton then filled me in on the chaos that had unfolded after the accident. The family was apparently furious with Ellie and had even tried to get her arrested. However, because I was unconscious, the police had only been able to take statements from the witnesses and they still needed my official statement to press any charges. Newton took my hands as he stressed how important it was for me to set aside my love for my sister and to report her actions. He was firm, stating that there was no justification for her pushing me down the stairs, especially in my condition. I shook my head, still in disbelief. The idea that Ellie could have done something so harmful was almost impossible for me to grasp. The pain in my wrist was physical, but the emotional pain of realizing that my own sister could have acted out in such a way was almost too much to bear. I told Newton that I wanted to speak to Ellie first as I wanted to understand what had driven her to act so destructively. I needed to hear from her directly to get some explanation or at least an apology. Newton dialed her number and handed me his phone. When my sister answered, I asked her straightforwardly about why she did what she did. Ellie sighed heavily as if the words were difficult to get out before finally opening up. Honestly, I'm just so tired of you always being the center of attention in our family, she said, her voice laced with resentment. You have a husband. Now you're pregnant. You get to have everything in your life, but last night was supposed to be my night only. Yet, yeah, as usual, you showed up with your pregnancy announcement and hogged all the attention. She paused for a moment before continuing, her tone shifting defensively. And pushing you down the stairs? That was just a harmless prank. I didn't even think you were really pregnant at first. I didn't mean for it to be such a big deal. Her words were shocking and hurtful. I couldn't believe that she had decided to push me down the stairs, essentially endangering my life just because 
She did not want to believe me. Before I could react, Ellie continued to say, I've been through a lot with my failed engagement and for you to just show up and rub your happiness in my face was just too much. Next time, I'm sure you will think twice before trying to overshadow me again. I was stunned by her explanation. She had absolutely no remorse and was basically blaming me for her actions. She had not even once apologized. My mother, who had been listening on the other end, took the phone from Ellie and asked me how I was doing. I hadn't realized my parents were still there with my sister. I told her that my baby and I were doing fine and, and that I had a wrist fracture. My mom told me that she, Dad and Ellie had stayed up all night at Ellie's place after the party because they were all worried about me. I scoffed and pointed out that they could have waited for me at the hospital rather than stay with my sister if they were so worried. My mom then told me how she and Dad had been talking to Ellie and both of them felt like she wasn't in the right state of mind since yesterday. She urged me to not report my sister to the police as this was just a stupid drunk mistake, despite what others are telling me. I was stunned by my mother's plea. Why are you defending Ellie when she hasn't even apologized to me? I asked, trying to make sense of the situation. My mom sighed heavily and explained that Ellie was struggling with a lot right now. She mentioned that Ellie had been crying non-stop since I had embarrassed her in front of everyone. I reminded my mom that the real issue was that Ellie had pushed me down the stairs and they needed to focus on that first. My mother started emphasizing how family is family and that fights like this sometimes happen between sisters. She pointed out how Ellie had never done this to me before, which was true. But at the same time, it did not excuse her behavior now. My mom commented that it was not worth pursuing charges over a wrist fracture and that she and dad would make sure this never happens again. My frustration reached its peak. I firmly stated that before I called her, I was a bit confused. However, after talking to Ellie, my mind was made up and she needed to be taught a lesson. My mom, growing increasingly upset, warned me that filing charges could destroy Ellie's career and begged me to reconsider. I told her that I couldn't care less about anything at that moment. In a final attempt to sway me, my mother threatened that she and dad would disinherit me if I went through with pressing charges against Ellie as this would be a permanent record on her and could affect her for the rest of her life. Her threat shocked me, but I decided not to back down. After the phone call, I went ahead and filed a case against my sister. AITA for potentially destroying my sister's life even though she has shown no remorse? Update one. Just wanted to update that my sister has finally been arrested. My parents have been calling me and my husband nonstop, but we have silenced our phones. Newton is extremely upset by how my parents seem to be favoring my sister over me. Meanwhile, Newton's family and other relatives have reached out to offer their support and express their concern. Everyone agrees that pressing charges against my sister was the right decision. After reading some of your comments, I'm even more worried about my baby's safety. If Ellie could push me down the stairs, I'm concerned that she might also pose a threat to my baby in the future. Hence, I'm planning to get a restraining order against her so that she cannot come near me or my family again. Update 2. Hello, fellow Redditors. Since my update last month, my sister, who was earlier charged with assault, has just been sentenced. Her lawyer, whom my parents fully paid for, was excellent and presented a strong case. Since it's her first offense, she was given a probationary period. The judge ordered Ellie to cover my medical bills, attend six months of mandatory counseling, and have regular check-ins with a probation officer. My parents are still furious with me, but are also too intimidated to confront me after the backlash they've been receiving from the rest of the family. 
I have openly admitted to everyone about how my parents wanted me to protect Ellie by not pressing charges against her. Relatives from both my side and my husband's side have reached out to my parents and told them off. My mom and dad continue to insist that Ellie is going through mental struggles, but nobody thinks it's a valid excuse for what she did to me. I hope, for Ellie's sake, my parents do take her to see a psychiatrist so that she can get better. Following the sentencing, I've applied for a restraining order to ensure she can't come near me or my family again. For everyone asking if my sister was really always good to me while we were growing up, or maybe I missed some signs, honestly, I'm not sure how to answer that. Yes, we had our usual disagreements and fought sometimes, but I never imagined she harbored such deep resentment towards me. As her older sibling, I've always loved her deeply and never thought she was capable of pushing me down the stairs just out of spite. Trust me, I am as shocked as the rest of you. I guess it's true when they say it's often the people closest to us who can end up betraying us. Update 3. It's been five months since I last updated here. Me and Newton haven't seen or been in contact with Ellie or my parents. Five days ago, I gave birth to my baby. Newton and I have been discharged from the hospital and now we're doing our best to care for our newborn son. Last night, just before we sat down for dinner, I heard a knock at the door. When I opened it, lo and behold, it was my mother standing there on my doorstep. I was completely taken aback. I did not expect to see her at all. I cautiously asked, what are you doing here? My husband stepped up beside me and stood protectively in front as he was as confused as me to see her on our doorstep. My mother immediately started gushing, telling me how she had heard from some of the relatives that I had given birth and she just had to come over to meet the baby. Her excitement seemed out of place considering everything that had happened between us recently. She went on talking about how she and dad were thrilled to finally be grandparents. She mentioned that dad would be arriving shortly with some wine and baby gifts so that we could all celebrate together as a family. I exchanged a look with Newton, both of us in disbelief. Was my mother really acting like the last few months hadn't happened? I reminded her as calmly as I could we hadn't spoken to her in the last five months after she decided to support Ellie over me. Yet now here she was, standing on my porch, acting as though we were all on good terms just because I had given birth, like we were about to have some joyous family reunion. Newton told my mom that she had forfeited her right to be a grandparent the moment she chose not to be a good parent to me first. He reminded her how inhumanely Ellie had treated me, and had she not been my sister, he would have beaten her up right then and there. However, being a mother, she had protected that monster over me. His words were firm and I could tell they hit a nerve. My mother's face shifted and she looked furious. She tried to argue back, insisting that she did what she had to do and that those were things of the past. She argued that we couldn't just cut her and her husband out of our child's life. She pointed out how unfair it was for us to keep her away from her grandchild. But Newton wasn't having it. He reminded her that this was our son. It was our decision who got to be involved in his life, and both of us didn't feel comfortable having her around in our lives. My mother continued to argue that Ellie had actually been diagnosed with depression, so that explained why she did what she did to me. I shook my head in frustration as my mother continued to justify that Ellie felt terrible for what she did and was working on getting better. She assured me that with the birth of my son, we could all finally be one happy family and let go of the past. I scoffed and pointed out how I did not want to do any such thing. She thought she could just sweep everything under the rug and be part of our lives again, but things had changed. There was no going back to the way things were. 
I couldn't handle much more of the situation, so I asked my mom to leave. I didn't want to spoil my mood further, especially not after everything that had already been said. But right at that very moment, my dad arrived in our driveway. He got out of the car, holding a big teddy bear and a big basket of gifts. I had no energy left to keep arguing with my parents. I didn't even understand how they had the audacity to just show up unannounced. Thankfully, Newton stepped in and urged me to go back inside and rest. He assured me he would handle them and take care of the matter, so I let him. As I walked back into the house, I could still hear their voices through the door. The yelling started almost immediately when Newton refused to let them both in. My dad kept insisting over and over again that he had every right to see me and the baby as he was family. My husband, who was usually always calm, snapped. He threatened to call the police if they didn't leave our property immediately. My dad, of course, kept trying to argue, insisting on leaving baby gifts behind as if that would somehow make up for everything. But Newton refused to accept anything from them. He was firm, telling them that we didn't want their gifts and that if they ever show their faces again, we would get a restraining order on them also. My parents were really shook by his reaction. I guess they had imagined they could just waltz back into our lives after everything, especially now that a baby was involved. I was proud of the way my husband dealt with the situation. Newton and I have talked today and we plan on putting up cameras around the house. Just in case, I hope to never see my parents again. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.